Are you trying to get a little bit more distance out of your golf swing by trying to get more lag as that golf club comes into the ball? Well, there's a right way to do it. There's a wrong way to do it. There's a huge misconception surrounding the right way to get that club in position to create that speed and power that you're looking for. If you're confused about this subject or you simply want to learn more, well, stay tuned. This video is really gonna help. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here today on course at Joondalup Resort and this video is all about teaching you how to get lag in the right way. I see a lot of players on Instagram, on YouTube, trying to get lag in the wrong way. They're driving the arm in, they're really trying to hinge their wrist back as much as they can. But there's a huge misunderstanding of the follow-on effects and issues of what that actually encourages the club to do. So once again, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to get lag, the importance of doing so, and some of the big errors that I see players make in an attempt to get what they're looking for. But before we get stuck in, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified of all the great content coming your way. And also, just another reminder, I am available for online coaching. So if you yourself are struggling with lag, shallowing the club, pitching, chipping, putting, whatever it is, well, I'm here to help. I can give you personalized drills and exercises relative to the key frustrations in your game. Send me your videos. I'll send them back on a great app called Skillist. You'll get an overview and over analysis of me drawing lines, so on and so forth, above your swing, showing you the key areas that you're struggling in. And then also another video just like this of me addressing you personally, showing you the areas that you can improve and the drills to go along with it. But into today's subject, once again, we're talking about lag, how to create the correct amount of lag and the way to do it. So first of all, let's talk about the incorrect way to do it. Well, what we see with a lot of recreational golfers, they are under the assumption that lag is the distance between this club shaft and the body. It's how much this golf club is coming in and it looks like this. Yeah, you see a lot of professional golfers getting into this position, but there's a checkpoint and there's a reference that we can look at to ensure and see if you're actually doing it correctly. So many players are doing this incorrectly and it just causes the shaft to get steep, the angle of the tack to get really, really down into the ground too much, the face open, the wrists in all sorts of funky positions and it causes a slew of ball striking errors as a result. So the first error that I see players make as they try and get lag is they're under assumption they need to drag the right arm into their body. Well, let's talk about the effects of dragging their right arm for the right hander, that is, flip it around if you're a left hander, into the body as the golf club is transitioning from the top of the backswing into the downswing. Well, as we do this, what tends to happen is their hands in space tend to stay quite high. And it's not as simple as just getting the golf club back in front of your body. So for example, let me show you where a professional would be by the time that the shaft is level with the ground. And this is a great reference that you can use. What we see with the professionals, they'd make their nice centered pivot. And as the golf club is coming down, as the golf club gets into this position here, for all you tech junkies, this is called P6. We want to see that the golf club is level with the ground and the hands are somewhat in front of the right leg. If you don't have much power, well then they're gonna be slightly behind. If you've got a lot of power and a lot of force and you're a big guy, well then your hands are gonna be more in front because you are going to be able to get the most amount of speed and height as a result. So getting those hands back in front of the right leg by this stage, you can see my arms, well, they're not really bent. The hands are quite low. The shaft is level with the ground. As I then just continue to rotate towards the ball, that right there, that is the proper position to be in to create that. So what happens when we try and drag that right arm in? So for example, if I get to the top and I try and drag that right arm in, what we tend to see is the arm actually dumps under the left. The club will then tend to drop behind. You can see my hands in space are very high. We see that as we get this right arm in, the handle's quite high, the lead arm gets quite above, and the club head drops under, which effectively from there is just going to create a whole bunch of inconsistency with how that club delivers back to the ball. So number one error that I see players make of when they're trying to get lag is they're dragging that right arm into the body. Yes, to a degree, if you're in a position where your body allows that, sure, but not to the extent that I see a lot of players doing it. It's actually just causing way too much inconsistency more so than they actually think they need to get. And error number two that I see players make is they're trying to get way too much wrist hinge to the point where I see players actually lose their grip. Their right hand or their back hand is coming off the golf club. 
They're trying to get this golf club so much into them that we actually see a separation of the palm off the hands. Now, your hands are your one point of connection with the golf club, so we really need to ensure that they are staying in contact the entirety of the golf swing. As soon as you start to lose your grip, well, the club face is not gonna be stable, and once again, it's gonna cause a bunch of issues with your ability to create consistent contact on that golf ball. So two main areas there that we see with players making when they're trying to get lag, they're either dragging that arm all the way in front of the body, or the hand is actually coming off in an attempt to do it. So let's talk about what lag actually is and how the professional does it, which is very different to those first two errors that we saw. Well, effectively, if we think about lag, it's simply just the angle between the club shaft and the forearm. It really doesn't have anything to do with this right arm as such, not nearly as much as what you would assume. So when we set up to the golf ball, if I was to simplify this whole process for you, if I set up to the ball and all I do from the address position is actually just move my hands into this position, so I'm moving my hands a little bit more towards my back leg and I'm hinging my right wrist, well, that's lag, that's it. It's not this huge drastic motion where the right arm is getting seriously bent into it. Yes, to a degree, there is some flex of that right arm. It's certainly not staying stiff. As I get that hand into that position, yeah, you can see it does bend a few degrees. But by that stage of the swing, it's not nearly as tucked in as we would see with most recreational golfers when they're trying to achieve that position. And that, once again, is just causing a whole bunch of inconsistency with that ball striking. So how do we practice this? How do we ensure that we're getting ourselves into this position and allowing ourselves to get real lag? Well, it starts all the way from the setup. Having a good functional grip is incredibly important, especially with that backhand, the right hand for the right hander, allows you to get grip, allows you to hinge that golf club correctly, and therefore has that follow on effect of achieving that lag. So there's plenty of other videos on my channel. I did one recently called How to Grip the Golf Club with Your Right Hand, which is really going to ensure that you're able to actually create some structure and the correct hold on the club to allow that hinge. So we're gonna gloss over that one here, and then we're gonna extend into the rest of the swing. So what I want you to do with your backhand is place your arm on top of your body, elbow crease, facing up and then you're going to turn your palm down. We want to see that the golf club is sitting on a diagonal across the fingers, your index finger extended down the shaft with your thumb on there. Now what you'll see is a bit of hinging of the back of the right wrist like this for the right hander and effectively that is almost presetting and allowing the club to hinge further back. Now the benefits of doing so with a correct hold, it allows the wrist to move correctly. So from this position here, as I then simply just make my backswing feeling like I'm turning my upper body to start the movement, because there isn't any tension, the right wrist will naturally hinge back into position. From there, the next key part that we're looking for in the backswing is to ensure that our chest is always rotating. We need chest rotation. If we don't get chest rotation, our arms are going to break down. When our arms break down, the shaft gets narrow and a whole bunch of errors ensue. So we need to ensure that once we are in this position and we've got a little bit of flex of that back wrist, that we are continuing to turn. And then as we start down, lag is not an upper body driven movement. It is a transitioning of pressure onto the lead foot as the arms begin to unload underneath the chest. We're not trying to force and drag them back in front. It is a sequence. The downswing is done in 0.25 of a second. As smart as we think we are, it's very challenging to make multiple movements in that amount of time and actually be conscious of where those positions are. Effectively, you're just throwing that golf club back in front of you if you're trying to drag the right arm or overhinge the wrists in an attempt to get some sort of speed. Sure, you might get a little bit more of a descending blow and maybe compress it, but I can guarantee the ball's not really gonna start with any consistency online with your target. Remember, we wanna swing the club through positions, not position the club through the swing. So when we are setting up and we're making these movements, allowing that right wrist for the right-hander to bend back as we've got rotation, shifting our pressure down, you can see how the arms naturally unload into this position that we see here. So once again, lag is really just the effect of the back wrist bending back with a slight amount of right arm bend or your back arm here. So as we're setting up to it, how do we get the feeling to do this? Well, effectively, you just need to simply and slowly go through the movement patterns, do a few small swings, and then clip some down there. So I'm just sitting up here. I'm getting a feeling that that back wrist is bending back. I'm then turning. From here, I am shifting. I'm doing this transition move that we see with the professional golfer, and that right wrist is bent back, and then following through. There's a multitude of drills out there to encourage this, but this video is simply an explanation of how players are getting lag incorrectly, what they think they need to do 
is actually not what needs to happen and not what we see with the best players in the world. So if you've got some confusion around the golf swing of how to create the lag, we'll review this video, watch the positions that I got myself into. And if you're a player who's trying to drag that right arm in, you're flexing your right arm too much, you're actually just increasing your inconsistency rather than making this movement pattern, which will deliver that golf club back to the ball in an effective manner. Don't be fooled by trying to get this golf club shaft as close to your body as possible. It's actually just the difference between the right hand and that forearm as you get into this position here then just allowing the golf club to slightly lean ahead of the handle yes it is absolutely one of those key phrases that you hear a lot at the moment of getting that lag very similar to shallowing the shaft which i'm going to do a video on shortly but it's all about increasing your ability to create a fluid free flowing motion which is not mechanical and not forceful in such a way it starts with how you hold the golf club and then conceptually getting a better understanding of how the body the arms and the club needs to move to ensure you're giving yourself the best chance of creating lag so if you got any questions at all please ask me below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, but until next time, I'm Kara Gray. Thanks for watching.